what's up guys it's the next day had quite an amazing sleep it didn't set an alarm as the next actual you know a relevant topic that will be spoken of at Aspen the next lecture will be at 4 p.m. so still have all the time in the world to have a very nice workout make my meals and have a good breakfast so I actually went to some supermarkets this morning it's a Sunday morning so a lot of them were closed so I had to visit like four before uh, finding one that was open even though Google Maps says they were all open but still I'm not sure why they weren't open but I found one to get me some peanut butter some water and some other stuff because right now I'm having my breakfast my pre-workout meal for the legs and I have this wait about two hours and then train the legs but here you can see that I get the peanut butter 100% peanuts usually the fat source in here in my oatmeal is either 30 grams of pure dark chocolate or 15 grams of almonds or peanut butter and 15 grams of of this um, chocolate and then we've got 100 grams of oats Added some banana to make this an incredible pre-workout meal for the legs. They really get a good workout in. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Added some salt and uh, some uh, whey protein, of course. Whey protein isolate, 40 grams. So yes, let's enjoy this and then train legs. All right, so as you can see, I'm at the gym right there. And I'm actually doing a legs, as I mentioned, but I'm doing it a hamstring dominant leg workout. So I like to start out with the laying leg curl. And this time I didn't put all the weights uh, with every set because that's irrelevant. Because when you're at a new gym using new machines in a different country, no less, you're simply not going to use the weights that you're normally doing. So if I put a weight down here, uh, you know, it won't be representative of what I usually do in my own gym. All you have to know is that I like to hit the reps that I put in the first set. I like to keep hitting at least that many reps and then every single set forward, I like to hit a heavier weight. And then the last set of each exercise, I like to go to failure pretty much. So always go full range of motion here. I like to start with the laying leg curl because it really targets the entirety of the hamstrings. Uh, as you know, at least the contraction part of uh, the hip part that you want to extend is a different exercise which you will be doing after this one to completely finish it off. But here you can see the gym, it's called Power 2 Fit in Krakow, Poland. Uh, they have a, you know, a line of machines that are all the same line, which is pretty nice. So uh, that's, uh, you know, it's a nice gym as you can see. Not very big, but the gym that we have isn't very big either. But if you use space efficiently, you pretty much have all the machines that you possibly could need. And uh, you can have a great workout no matter what you train. And this is what I was talking about. I'm here doing, uh, you know, a supposed Romanian deadlift but it kind of turned to a stiff leg that lift. You can't see, but I'm actually standing a, on a platform, so I'm not able to stand wider than this. So it kind of turns into a hybrid between a stiff leg deadlift and a Romanian deadlift. But uh, the most important thing here is I'm really going downwards until I feel a maximum stretch in the hamstrings and then I'm extending my hips forward, contracting the glute. So it's both a hamstring and a glute exercise to really work that entire chain of muscles. I first did, you know, uh, the isolation movement for the hamstrings, really get them warmed up with a lot of reps, got a lot of blood in there and then go nice and heavy on the stiff leg deadlift or the Romanian deadlift to really get some, uh, you know, stretch action going. And then apologies about the quality of this clip right here because, you know, this is a new, you know, not a new, but a different camera that I took with me. And normally I take a bigger camera, but because I wanted to, you know, also film at the Congress, I didn't want to bring a big camera with me. So it's a smaller one with different lighting settings. So it kind of turns to this view, actually darker than this, but I uh, changed it a lot when you point it to a, uh, you know, outside where a light source is. So anyway, I first finished off with the standing leg curl uh, to really isolate and finish off those hamstrings and then in between I'm doing the uh, leg extensions to uh, get started on the leg ex you know the quads and actually I didn't film it but in between I also did a very heavy uh, leg press it was a machine but you could actually add some free weights as well so that I did five sets of those into a failure and apologies for this view guys but I had to show you because it was the only clip I had of this particular exercise but this 
is pretty much the only exercise that I miss in our own gym. You can mimic it with different, uh, you know, different movements, but the adductor machine is really underestimated to create that thickness, those thick thighs in between the legs. So the inner legs will be built by this. All right, guys, I actually had a quite a nice workout here at this gym. Power to fit in Poland, Krakow. No. Pretty nice gym, as you saw. Couldn't record everything, but I train legs, and uh, you gotta walk up the stairs and off the stairs to get into the gym. So, uh, kind of cramped up there, so I know it was a nice workout, but also because it's so hot, I'm sweating a lot, losing a lot of fluid, so cramping is uh, happening more often. So, added a little bit of Himalayan salt to my uh, post rocket shake, 60 grams of whey isolate. And we learned at the uh, Aspen Congress that the muscle fullness of protein is actually increased after workout. So uh, you can actually get more way I slid in after training. But anyway, let's walk home and eat my post-workout meal. Alrighty, just got home and this is my post-workout meal. 350 grams of sweet potato. Actually 400 grams of sweet potatoes. Put in a little extra. Got some um, zucchini on the bottom, 150 grams, and some 300 grams of white fish. So that's gonna be beautiful. Of course, adding enough of the Himalayan salt and uh, enough water. But yeah, that was quite a nice workout to have. And now I'm gonna enjoy this meal. And in about one and a half hours, the next Aspen Congress uh, symposia will begin. At least the next one that I'll be attending, so I'll enjoy that, try to film a little bit of that as well, and um, yeah, time to enjoy this meal. ...is related to at least one food. This is a survey of 197 people in Sweden um, regarding what foods impact on their um, symptom. You probably can't see um, each of those foods there, but just to um, summarize some of them, the foods with FODMAPs in, uh, fatty foods, foods with benzoates, Alright, so I'm pausing it here for a little bit to explain a bit more what's going on here. So this is a lecture about the FODMAP diet. If you don't know what that is, it basically means any foods, mostly carbohydrates, that irritate the gut, cause bloating, cause water retention, just cause irritation in the gut because of lack of um, absorbability, lack of digestibility of the car those carbohydrates. You can see here that dairy products are at the very, very top. And this list represents what people complain about with regards to having gut issues like bloating or stomach pains after eating a food that's on this list. So dairy products is at number one and then understandably beans, but also apple because when you eat an apple combined with the skin, you simply are di you know ingesting the sugars, the fructose plus the fibers, which is hard to digest for some people. Then you've got the flour, you know the gluten and then some other uh, you know uh, vegetables and fruits so mostly it's the carbohydrates combined with some of the fibers and that will be more information about that in the next clip that will cause those irritations in the gut so I just want to show you this because I have talked about this previously in uh, a video about that a bodybuilder should be eating a low FODMAP diet so that's a diet low in the ingredients the food items that you see here however some people can tolerate items of this list but most people cannot so if you experience any kind of stomach pains eliminating foods like this and then try to reintroduce them to find out what really causes it is a very good idea um, sulfites histamines lectins um, biogenic amines um, all are, uh, are reported by some patients to uh, result in um, uh, symptoms of IBS. Sensible oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols, um, and we, we shorten that to FODMAPs. So the oligosaccharides are things like fructans, which are contained within um, in wheat and, and onion and garlic and some fruits and vegetables, um, and also the alpha galacto oligosaccharides, so um, gosses that are contained within uh, beans, peas, and lentils, um, and other pulses. And the disaccharides such as lactose in dairy products, the monosaccharides, such, um, in, which is namely fructose, and also polyols, so sorbitol, mannitol, and xylitol, the uh, sugar alcohols that are um, in some stone fruits, and also added as an artificial sweetener in, um, in, in some foods and drinks. And in the next few slides, I shall present to you some of the scientific rationale for why these compounds 
um, might induce symptoms in people with IBS. Um, if you look at the MRI figure at the top, you don't need to, even need to look at the, um, at the data below. You can quite clearly see that fructose specifically re results in excess water in your gut. And so you can see that within an hour of having a dose of fructose, you will get water within your small intestine. Um, and that occurs only for fructose, um, but when you look at it later on, fructans cause an increase in gas in the colon. And that occurs between four um, and six hours later. Um, and that's, that effect is specific to fructans. All right, so this is also very interesting. So this part is about giving people drinks with either fructose or fructans. Now we all know what fructose is, that uh, really is a fruit sugar basically. But what's really interesting, and you know, this is a drink, so not really representable or comparable to whole foods, that's another debate. But what you can see scientifically is that you, when you ingest a high amount of fructose, literally, you increase the water amount in your small intestines, AKA your gut. So that means more distension of the gut when you ingest something that irritates the gut, AKA fructose. Now fructans are present in like leeks, onions, and other food items that actually cause more gas. And that most people know. But it's important to actually realize that eating foods like this every single day makes it harder for you to absorb the high quality foods like the protein, the micronutrients and other you know, essential fatty acids into your system because it's partially blocked by extra water and or gas. And you also don't want to permanently distend the stomach or the intestines because some people have a bloated stomach all the time and that's because their diet is completely comprised of always high FODMAP foods. And I'm just going to be talking while this is playing because the, the sound wasn't really good, but here you can literally see it happening when you ingest uh, FODMAPs, like foods that are high in FODMAPs and you are sensitive to it, the fermentation actually causes gases, which literally on the right side, you can see that your colon is distending. And this distension is what you can see in a lot of bodybuilders, even on stage. So a part of the bubble gut problem is wrong foods. All right, there was actually quite a nice lecture. I just got uh, home back from Aston. The start of the lecture was about close to two hours, actually, which was very nice. It was about different diets, the Mediterranean diet, what it does for cardiovascular disease, uh, the effects of vegetarian and vegan diets. But what I was mostly interested in was the last part of the lecture, the FODMAP diet, or the low FODMAP diet, which you guys have uh, seen me uh, and heard me talk about on this channel already, as I follow the low FODMAP diet myself, especially during contest prep. And that basically means taking out all the carbohydrates and, you know, the nutrients that irritate your intestines, the slow down digestion, create bloating and gas. You want to minimize that uh, as much as possible to create the smallest possible waste to optimize absorption of all your nutrients, all your micronutrients, but also your protein and that your, uh, you know, digestion that improves enabling you to eat those six meals and be hungry for all of them and actually uh, you know follow the bodybuilding diet much easier so all you have to do is eliminate all those FODMAP items which the professor professor talked about and then reintroduce the ones that you you know want to eat like if you get uh, if you don't know what items irritate your gut because it could be 10 plus of them just eliminate everything from the diet and stick to the basics that you know don't irritate your gut and then slowly reintroduce them. For example, if you like to eat bread, but you don't know if it causes the symptoms like bloating, like eliminate it first along with all the other foods and let that be the first thing you reintroduce. If there's no symptoms, then you can uh, keep eating it. So that's basically how it works. But uh, I just wanted some scientific insight in how that really works in clinical practice, because if it works there, it'll work for you in your daily life as well. Anyway, it's uh, I ate my meal, my third meal of the day with some rice, some fish and some vegetables during the lecture. And now it's almost time for my uh, fourth meal of the day, which is just going to be some simple fish, some vegetables and some fats. All right, it's the next day. Just woke up, had my beautiful breakfast. Actually, there's some vacuum exercises uh, before having the breakfast, kind of because I can't really do cardio today. 
as I will have my poster presentation quite soon. We'll be hanging the poster, it's actually already in my bag, and then we'll present it from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. So basically you just have to stand there and uh, professionals will be walking around asking you questions, most likely hard, direct questions. So you need to be uh, you know, knowledgeable about the subject that you researched, but hey, I'm a bodybuilder and the subject of the entire study were bodybuilders. So uh, it's gonna be pretty awesome. Of course, dressed for the occasion. What I wanted to do is um, wear something nice, but at the same time showcasing that you are a bodybuilder because that makes it interesting for the people walking around. Usually at a congress like this, you know, it's the regular people, the stereotype people that you pretty much always expect as scientists and doctors and dietitians. You know, very few rare occurrences where someone falls beyond that stereotype. And at least in terms of how they, you know, appear to other people. So since my research was about bodybuilders, and I'm pretty sure that I'm the only one that presents that research, I wanted to look like a bodybuilder as well. So uh, make a nice mix with using father and son's clothing. They are from England, not sponsored by them or anything, but I always see on Instagram some people wearing it, Arash Rabar, reading Grimes. Uh, wearing those clothing and um, this is a triple XL super slim stretch size so I just wanted to try it on and uh, that's uh, you know just very nice to be able to walk around in like a shirt like this without being very tight and cramped up in it because it's actually quite comfortable to wear it so yeah um, I'm gonna be doing that in about you know, I'm gonna be there in about an hour and um, then it's gonna all start and after that I'm just gonna have a lot of fun training eating walking around uh, doing some more groceries because i did run out of fish a little bit so we'll see where we can get that but i don't care if i have to walk a lot because uh when you're in a different country you've never been to it's a uh, very much fun to walk around it's uh doing cardio in the morning no hassle at all so my tip to people who, who are doing cardio in the morning you don't always have to be on a machine. You don't have to go to the gym and be in one spot. If you walk around in a good pace with some podcast or music on, or not even any music, just enjoying the scenery, it's gonna go by a lot faster. That's a very important tip I can give you because um, cardio is just important and um, you don't wanna be dreading doing cardio. Right now, uh, when I do an hour of cardio in the morning, I'm actually looking forward to it. Because first of all, if you wear headphones and listen to a podcast time goes a lot faster if you walk around in a different environment so if you choose a route that is in your hometown just choose a different route that you're you've never walked go to different sceneries and uh, try to calculate that you'll be back in about an hour because sometimes I did walk half an hour more longer but um, it's all good you want to not dread it because after that you have a beautiful breakfast to enjoy my breakfast again was the oats and i actually have a tip for uh, this is my lower carb day and i have a tip to increase the amount of oats in a meal so uh, i'm gonna make a separate video about that but it has to do with egg whites instead of putting like for example if i put in 60 grams of whey isolate now i only put in 20 grams but i add 200 uh, grams of uh, liquid egg whites so it'll puff up the oatmeal quite a lot but still with the same protein content so that's just a tip but i'm going to make more videos about making or hacking your oatmeals in the morning or whenever you want to eat them anyway i'm going to enjoy that the rest of this day and you'll see in the next clip probably that i'll be at the congress This is basically the main hall where all the posters are. Then you've got here the auditorium halls, theater halls, where the symposia will be and have been. So kind of gives you an impression of the building. Right there is outside, that's Poland, Krakow. Pretty amazing to be here, guys. All right, guys, so here it is, my own poster at the Aspen Congress. You can see here how much posters there are. There are a lot more. I am on the first floor. You know, on the second to first floor of this building. And now let me just show you what this poster is all about. In about an hour, the official presentation will begin where people can ask questions. But I just put it up and it looks pretty awesome. It is a different material, it's no paper, but it's actually made of cloth. 
and the title is the optimal estimate for resting metabolic rate in male bodybuilders so what that means is that I use different formulas, you know, the Harrison Benedict to calculate your resting metabolic rate. I compared a lot of different formulas that take into account lean body mass. And here you can see all of them, for example. And what I did is compare the outcome of these calculations with the actual uh, basal metabolic rate measured by this machine right here, an indirect calorimetry, cal calorimetry calorie metry in English and um, no of course the target group was bodybuilders this is the machine we use to actually calculate all the uh, the calories burned in rest of at least 20 bodybuilders and then compared the actual metabolism to the formulas that calculate the metabolism and what uh, you can see is that for example the formula of Bernstein the green represents how accurate it is is very low you know here accurate predictions on the graph it's very low and it goes from low to very high and to 70 percent accurate is the formula of cunningham and that is uh, what you know what was the result of the actual study and that's what's quite interesting as you can see the average fat fresh mass index was 24.2 which is above the average of around 18 or 19 for the untrained male you know that's very difficult to actually get a target group as bodybuilders because what truly is a bodybuilder you know what muscle mass does someone need to have to be defined as a bodybuilder and i just chose something that had close to 25 fat fresh mass index on average and i came to 24.2 it's not easy to find as many people interested in that with such high muscle mass so the methods were people had to be fasted not trained the last day to make sure that the metabolism wasn't affected uh, so they did this 20 outcomes were calculated and um here this is a very interesting part you can see that there is a correlation between the fat free mass index and the resting metabolic rate you can see that the measured calories by that machine go up as the fat free mass index goes up and that means how much more muscle you have for example this is less muscle than that guy right there the more muscle you have the higher your metabolic rate will be and you know using this formula using this graph I actually uh, made a formula that you can use to predict your own metabolic rate when you are a bodybuilder with a significant at least a, an above average amount of muscle mass so I didn't include that into this particular poster because the reasoning the conclusion uh, my questions were does muscle mass um, actually correlate with an increase in resting metabolic rate so how many calories you burn in rest and which of the formulas that are that are right now in the literature is the most accurate and that was the Cunningham formula but still at 70 percent accuracy it's still not very accurate so using the findings that I made I made a specific formula to make sure that if you use it it will be very much closer to your actual metabolic rate in, uh, in rest so the thing is though what I of course realized is that 20 people isn't enough to really make a very solid um, resting metabolic rate formula so you need more people like a thousand people to get a better result but it's a start so the formula is actually in the description of this video so if you want to use it on yourself you can you just have to know your fat fresh fat free mass index you know English and Dutch kind of coincide in this one but um, if you know that you can you can use that for a formula and then you will have an answer so you don't really have to use a lot of things to find out your metabolic rate in rest and the thing is all of these are different formulas some use height some use weight some use fat mass but this one the most accurate one only used lean body mass and nothing else so it seems that lean body mass or the fat free mass index is enough to accurately predict the uh, metabolic rate of bodybuilders in rest so that's very interesting indeed check out the description if you want to see the formula that i came up with but keep in mind it isn't very accurate yet but it's more accurate than any of the formulas you can find in literature right now because those all of these are based on people that are not bodybuilders these are based on either athletes or regular people and athletes as in cyclists runners not true bodybuilders so 
this is a synopsis of what I did for this study and I'll go into more detail in another video explaining you exactly how this truly goes but anyway I'm quite pleased and here's another table actually you can see that the indirect calorimetry measured that the average calories burned in rest was 2355 right and the Cunningham was a little uh, less than 100 below it so that's quite accurate but as you can see the lower we go the less accurate they become and this is uh, the top uh, five actually compared to the indirect telemetry but uh, you can see the accurate predictions go down quite fast so the cunning was the best then we go down the list and it really goes down quite quickly but anyway let's enjoy the rest of the day all right guys it's the next day i just did some cardio outside just uh, did some groceries and uh, tonight at 6.15 I'm flying back home to Eindhoven in the Netherlands but uh, I'm having my breakfast right now already packed my suitcase a little bit and uh, we're gonna go to the gym in about two hours um, you know just a quick tricep workout kind of looking forward to it it's it's a pretty nice gym as you see you know it's, it's not comparable to uh, our own gym because we personalize everything of course but all the machines at this gym are there and most of them are pretty pretty awesome so yeah, really liking it here and the owner is amazing i'll tell you more about it but the owner like people in poland when they are serious about bodybuilding they are serious real serious you know they are like the center of european bodybuilding has been for a while like germany as well just the entire block of countries there and um the owner was very serious about it he showed me uh you know what's up in that gym uh, talked to me about they're really you know hardcore but you can really tell by his enthusiasm and passion about it that uh, he was serious about bodybuilding so he really appreciated that me as a pro pro bodybuilder actually came to train there so you know really appreciative of that anyway I'm going to enjoy this beautiful breakfast it looks pretty good it's a medium carb day today so this is a hundred grams of oats 15 grams of uh, dark chocolate 75 78 percent dark chocolate by Calabout, really delicious. 15 grams of uh, natural peanut butter, and we've got some uh, Gladiator Pro Whey, 20 grams actually, and 20 grams of collagen, to uh, because uh, I trained my back yesterday and uh, the bicep is usually a little acting up when I train the back, so I put a little of collagen powder in there to help repair everything that's good for general health and skin and hair, etc. But I also put 200 milliliters or grams of liquid egg whites in here, pumping this up to a bigger meal, adding some extra salt, a little bit of sweetener, and it's delicious. I'm going to enjoy this. Alrighty, so I just had my breakfast and I'm already making these two meals. This is going to be a post-workout meal, some delicious vegetables, mostly uh, zucchini and carrots and low fat my vegetables, uh, some 100 grams of rice with some fish underneath. The fish is underneath is this. It's a uh, pollock fish, Alaskan pollock fish. This is going to be, be the meal after the post-workout meal that I'll have two hours later again. And the eggs are cooking right here. Kaboom, just like that. So why I'm making eggs is to add a fat source to these meals as well. Uh, at least one of them because I also need some meals on the plane so I'll make that, that an egg meal it's easier to uh, to do but yes this is a, a little less fish than I usually have it's around 200 grams instead of the 300 grams that I like to have and of course my good friend the Himalayan salt will aid me in making these meals a lot more tasty trust me guys don't be afraid of the salt some people might look at this and say well the vegetables look good but the rice looks bland and the fish won't taste good as you can see, I put some marination on it in terms of soy sauce and some oregano, the same I did here. And um, but the, the rice looks dry, people say. But you have to add the herbs, the spices, and especially the salt to make it tasty. So that's, uh, trust me, you have to do that. It's only good for you. It's not even bad or anything. So give it a shot. All right, guys, I've been home for about a week now. So now you're watching part two. It's been, of course, a week since I was in Poland. But it was a lot of fun and I just want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Uh, I try my best to film as much as possible but it's not always possible at a congress like this. But I had a lot of fun, I learned a lot and I'll be actually uh, probably 
um, then doing more with my study, with the, with the research that I've done to perfect the formula. As I said before, the formula is in the description, but it's still a concept. So now you can only use your fat free mass index to use to calculate the, the resting metabolic rate. But I also want to add different factors to make it even more accurate, adding age, adding uh, height, adding total weight, for example, might actually make this formula more accurate. But for that, I would need to do some more statistical work with the data I already have, and perhaps do even more research, like uh, you know, test 20 more people to make it even more accurate. But anyway, guys, I just wanna thank you for watching. And uh, I've been quite busy the last week as when I'm away for the weekend, like I was away for around four days, but um, four days of not being able to do stuff here really means that I have to double up on the week before and the week afterwards. So I've been quite busy, which is why there weren't as many videos as normal, but now I have more time so you can expect a lot more footage to come to the Vintage Genetics channel. And uh, new items are coming to the store, probably up right now, as you know, the big shirts are up at the store right now, the vintage scoop neck shirts. Still use 400K as a code for 10% off them. New shorts will be coming and restock of all the other clothing will also be there. So if you subscribe on the website, you will receive an email as soon as it happens. But I wanna thank you for watching this video and don't forget to stay.